This video is about Laplace's method. In the context of statistics, what Laplace's method does, it fits a Gaussian or a normal distribution to some function, or more precisely, it fits some constant uh, times this Gaussian. Another thing it allows you to do is to find the integral of some function or the normalizing constant, and this is because we know how to calculate the integrals of Gaussians. Yeah, we know how to find the uh, normalizing constant of Gaussians. And so it's really helpful just to remember that even though it has a crazy name, it's not very hard. The, the principle is very, very simple. It's just to fit a Gaussian, just to fit a normal distribution to whatever function that you have. Now, obviously, if you have a function that resembles a Gaussian, this approximation will be very good. If you have a function that doesn't resemble a Gaussian so much, this method will be less than good. If you have a function that has two modes, bimodal distribution, then this method will be horrible. So why don't we start by just showing uh, analytically how you get the Gaussian approximation. Suppose you have some non-negative function f of x, which is your distribution that you are looking for. And you know how to write f of x, but you don't know its normalizing constant. You don't know the integral. And because of that, you don't actually know how to use it as a distribution. So the first step is to transform f of x into log f of x. So we have some h of x, which will be the log, natural log of f of x. And the second step is to expand a second degree Taylor series around the mode of f of x or h of x. Okay, so we will have the mode and we will expand a second degree Taylor series. So h of x will be approximately h of x at the mode plus the first derivative plus the second derivative at the mode yeah okay now because we are expanding the Taylor series around the mode we know what h what's the first derivative of h around the mode will be the mode is the maximum of that function so this here will be zero so this whole thing over here this cancels out so we're left with okay now let's see how we calculate the integral so we know that the integral of f of x well, this is just the integral of e to the power of h of x. This is approximately the integral of e to the power of h x at the mode plus h second derivative of h, this thing over here. OK, and this. is equal to this times okay so this is the constant that I was mentioning before and it's basically just f at the mode and this thing over here the integral it's very easy to identify this it's very easily identified, its normal distribution, the non-normalized normal distribution, with a variance of 1 over h, second derivative of h at the mode. More precisely, it's the absolute value of this, because since we are working with distributions and the log of distributions, 
uh, tend to look something like this, tend to be a conve concave function, then we can uh, usually it's safe to assume that uh, h time x is negative. So this whole thing over here is actually a, a negative uh, number. And this is why it's even a normal distribution. So this is the variance of the Gaussian. And this is the mode. And that's it. This is what we get. We get the, no the constant and some Gaussian, which we can now very easily um, normalize. So if we need to find the normalizing constant of our integral, well, it's just equal to f at the mode times square root of 2 pi 1 over the absolute value of the second derivative at the mode. And this will be the normalizing constant of our original function. Okay, so here it's in one dimension, but this can also be expanded to two dimension, three dimension, etc. Yeah, the only real dif difference is that the mode will be uh, not just a single number, it will be a vector, yeah? it will be some vector, and the second derivative will be a matrix. It will be a negative definite mat matrix. And here it will be instead of 1 over the second derivative, it will be the second derivative at the mode inverted and the determinant of that. Okay, so let's see a concrete example. Suppose our function was 4 minus x squared e to the power of minus x squared. Okay, so h of x would be the natural log of f, which will be the natural log of 4 minus x squared minus x squared. Now we need two things. We need the mode and we need the second derivative. So for the mode, we need to find the maximum of this function. So we'll find the first derivative. This will be x squared times minus 2x minus 2x. And it's quite easy to see that uh, this will, that x equals 0 is the only viable solution. So we have the mode. The mode is 0. And the second derivative is, well, minus 2 from here. Now, plus minus 2 times 4 minus x squared minus minus 2x times the derivative of this thing over here, which is minus 2x, divided by 4 minus x squared squared. And this is equal at the mode to minus 2 plus minus 8 plus 2x squared but this will be 0, minus 4x squared, but this will be also 0. Here will be 4 minus 0 squared. So this is minus 2, minus 8 divided by 16, and this is minus 2.5. We can see this is indeed negative. Okay, so the variance will be 1 over the minus of this. So 2.5, which is 0 0.4. So what the Laplace method tells us is that the original function um, can be approximated with a Gaussian that looks like this. Times, of course, the, the mode. So this is the Gaussian and uh, the function at the mode, so f at 0. And f at 0, we can already see this is 4. So instead of this thing over here, we got a Gaussian over here. 
And since we know the Gaussian, we can already know the normalizing constant. I want to show you the graph of uh, these functions. So here we got f of x. You can see it's uh, 4 minus x squared e to the power of minus x squared. If we take the log, the log of this, you can see it's a very con concave function. And here I took um, the Laplace approximation, which is the constant time some Gaussian. And you can see it's very, very, very close to the original function. Here, there are parts where it's a bit above the function, but overall, this is a very, very good approximation to our original function. Now, I'll switch into R, and i show you how you can do this in R. There's a library called LearnBase by Jean Albert, which already implements the Laplace approximation. And all it does, really, is you give it the log of the function, and some initial guess for where the mode might be. And first it just finds the mode, and then it just inverts the second derivative or the Hessian of that function and uses all of this to uh, do exactly what we did. So here we have our function, the same function I showed you, and I also make the log of this function. I give it to the Laplace function, with an initial guess one for the where the mode might be. Sorry. Yeah. Now we can see that the mode is basically zero. We can see that the constant is four around this value. The variance is 0 0.4, exactly how we came to it ana analytically. And now we can also find the normalizing constant, which is 6.341. And we can see how it was derived also. It's just the constant times the square root of 2 pi times the variance. And this gives exactly the same value. And just so you know, the real integral of our original function, according to Wolfram Alpha, is 6.2. So it's pretty close. 6.34, 6.2, it's pretty close. It's not such a bad approximation in this case. But um, there are cases where it's a bit less of a good approximation. And this is one of them. I want to show you this function over here is a gamma function. It's a gamma distribution with parameters 2 and 1. And if I try to approximate this function with the Laplace's method, if I try to, I basically try to fit a Gaussian to this function, which doesn't look exactly like a Gaussian. But let's try to do this anyway. So we create the log of the function, uh, we fit a Laplace uh, to it, a Gaussian to it, and we see that the mode is 1, so the mode is more or less in the same place. The normalizing constant is 1.1, I'm sorry, the constant used times the Gaussian is 1.1, the variance is 0 0.99, and uh, the normalizing constant is 0 0.9221. Now already here, you can see that the normalizing constant is a bit off because we know the integral of this function over here. The integral of this function is 1 because it's a valid distribution. So instead of 1, we got 0 0.922. And indeed, if we try to uh, draw the normal distribution that was given, the normal approximation that was given with the Laplace's method, we see that it's not such a good fit anymore. I mean, yeah, the mode is more or less the same, but we can see that in this part, on the right side, there's some, the, the approximation is below the function, and on the left side, the approximation is above the real function. So this is not such a good fit, but it's also not a horrible fit. I want to show you now another function, which will just be a horrible fit. And let me go back to the graphs here. So if you have a function like this, where it's basically bimodal. Yeah. If you have a function like this, then the approximation you will get will only find one of the one of the modes. It won't be correct to the, both modes. And we can see this is the graph that was found using Laplace approximation. It only really fits one mode. So the normalizing constant will only be almost half of the real normalizing constant that it should have had because 
it will only give you the integral of this part over here. Well, in fact, the true integral of this function is almost twice as big. So this is basically it. I'll just want to summarize it, the Laplace approximation. Well, what are the pros of the Laplace approximation? Well, basically, it's just very, very simple. It's just fitting a Gaussian, and it's also very fast. You don't need, it's not very complicated to achieve. The cons of this approximation is first, you need the mode, which is something that is not uh, necessarily easy to uh, achieve, to have. And second is that it's not so accurate especially if you have a bimodal distribution or even more than two modes, then this approximation is not so good. But in many, many cases where the function does have one mode, then this approximation could be good enough. And uh, what you should probably do is look, try to visualize the distribution in some way, and if you can, and then try uh, to decide if Laplace approximation works for you. Thank you for watching.